all my movie maniacs out there, Mark the Movie Man here to set time, and let me tell you what time it is. It's really early in the morning, or really late, depending on how you look at it. I literally just came from the midnight showing of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. Yes, the sequel to this film right here, part two of the Hobbit trilogy that director Peter Jackson is bringing us. And we get the continuing story of Bilbo Baggins and the troop of dwarves that he's accompanying to the uh, last kingdom of the dwarves as Thorn, a good shield, is trying to go back and claim his rightful place uh, as king under the mountain, but of course they have a few uh, st stumbling blocks they have to get over along the way. One of them is the orcs that are still continually chasing them, and we also get uh, the smog who is protecting the treasure under the mountain and the big, huge, fiery, nearly uh, invincible dragon. And so they've got those obstacles as well as many others to face to try to get to the mountain and we see how Bilbo utilizes that special ring that he happened to win uh, from Mr. Gollum in the first one. Now this one improves on a lot of things. One, while the dwarves unlike the first one were a lot more comical relief in this one no they show a few uh, more uh, more improved battle prowess and while they do still have some humorous moments in here it's definitely this whole movie's got a darker tone to it a more serious tone which is what you needed with the storylines that you had going on which you have a number of them going on here you have the build up of the bad guys the orcs and the the dark presence and the rise of a evil darkness that's taking over the land you have uh, you're introduced the elves where yes we get legolas back played by orlando bloom once again and we're introduced to a new elf uh, tariel played by evangeline lily and oh she was my favorite new character in this man does she kick some major ass i i think you know she's on she's almost above legolas in a couple of ways of the way she was fighting i mean she just rocked and i really enjoyed her character in this film and the addition the other additions uh, that they have in here as well uh, you know you, you've got um, you've got uh, the introduce of Bard who is a, a guy who helps the dwarves get into Lake Town you've got uh, you know you've got a little bit more of Sylvester McCoy so the Doctor Who fans will be happy there and of course Smog played uh, voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch oh let me tell you about Smog, folks. You forget that this guy is a rendered CGI. You think this dragon is real. They did a fantastic job, I think, on the Smog look. You think they actually have this dragon hidden in New Zealand somewhere that they pulled out and wanted acting and gave Benedict Cumberbatch his voice, you know? I, it's such a fantastic job. I mean, they had to do that. They had to sell this dragon as... Uh, realistic as possible and I think they accomplish that in leaps and bounds all the facial expressions that you get while he's talking with Bilbo and just the, the way his character is written is just fantastic I, I just love that part but what I really enjoyed is the fact that unlike in the first one where you kind of felt everything was just what you're just waiting for the Bilbo uh, confrontation with Gollum you don't have that with uh, this one and this one it's you're not just waiting for the that confrontation with Bilbo and uh, Smog, you, there's all kinds of interesting things going on, interesting storylines. Uh, very few problems did I have with how they handled each of these characters. Gandalf with him going to face the necromancer. You have Bard dealing with uh, his baggage from his ancestry, and of course the dwarves and Thorin himself. Now what is also interesting is throughout this movie they do carry a theme among the different characters and it's a very similar theme it's a theme of obsession it's a theme of uh you know uh, of just being that wanting that so bad that they accomplish their goals so bad that they will do anything to get it and and even forget their friends at some point or uh, be so arrogant in, in their uh, obsession of keeping their station as in smog or uh, arrogance in in that they so does feel like they deserve are entitled to this position and you've got that carried throughout all your characters you know, you thorn and good shield you get that you get that in smog and you even get that in bilbo with the ring how he 
you know, he's a little reluctant to use the ring, but man, he's just obsessed with using it, and it does help him in a pinch, uh, but at the same time, he, he, he's got moments where he's really upset. Martin Freeman plays Bilbo so fantastically. I really loved his Bilbo in this. It's really grown from the first one, uh, and you can see the change in his character, which I really liked, and it was something that I was hoping to get to see in the first one, but we definitely get to see it in this one. Uh, the visual effects I thought were fantastic, except for the one of the more famous scenes is the barrel escape. That one felt a little bit CGI fest like the Goblin Cave. Not quite as bad as that. Not quite as bad. And you do get some elvish or kick-ass battles in there, so that kept things interesting. But I will say that's probably the only section of this film that I had really any type of problem visually with the effects. While I do enjoy all the practical effects they had in Lord of the Rings, and this one, for it didn't quite feel like the CGI fest that they had in the first one, okay? Now, I enjoyed the first one a lot more than a lot of other people. And I gave it a high rating of four and a half stubs. And in this case, folks, they improved on a lot of things. And outside of one little section in this, I enjoyed the new characters, the in-depth storyline, the darker feel to it, and the more serious tone overall. It's carrying on that tradition of what started with Catching with Fire, in that the second film is actually better, I think, in a number of ways than the first one. While it still has some issues, overall, I had to give it five stubs. I loved it. It was worth staying up really late. I'm going to be like Keith Richards in the morning after a hard bender at work, but it was definitely worth the watch on the big screen. The 3D wasn't three distraction at all. They're getting better and better with it all the time. And I, overall, I just really enjoyed this film. It was a lot of fun, and I definitely got my money's worth. And it does make me feel like uh, I can't wait to see the third one, okay? And, and that's the thing. For the most part, too, in case you're worried, this one doesn't feel like a middle film until the very end. So check out Hobbit Desolation of Smog. Uh, I, it's worth standing in the cold line at, for a midnight showing and showing up tired at work because let me tell you, it's a visual spectacle that actually has some depth of character and darker tones, which is what we were hoping to get in the first one. You now get in this one. And thank you for watching uh, the final cut as always, folks. And until next time, keep that ticket stuff.